How's it going everyone? College Lefty and in this video I'm going to be going over the top five most overpowered finest players in MLB The Show 20 and I'm going to be breaking it down in a few different ways. So let's go ahead and hide the face cam. We'll talk a little bit about some of these players and get into some gameplay with them. So I've had a few days to try some of these finest cards out and without a doubt Juan Soto is by far the best finest card that you can get in MLB The Show 20. He almost has maxed out hitting stats. When you prestige this card, he will be even better. But mainly, his live series quirks are really what help him out. And uh, in previous years, we didn't see these quirks on some of these players. And this is actually the first year that flashbacks at all have these live series quirks. And I'm going to talk about what that means. I have talked about that in previous years as well. But to kind of uh, compare, if you notice in that last screenshot, uh, Juan Soto's PCI actually shrunk after the first pitch. And that's because he has that first pitch quirk activated. And these quirks can stack up one on top of another and increase both contact and power significantly with multiple quirks activated. Now, here we have a screenshot of Manny Machado playing at home versus away. If you rewind, you can see that his PCI does in fact shrink when he's playing away versus playing at home. And that makes a big difference. I still think Manny Machado is the second best hitter in terms of finest players. I would have to think that uh, Yu Darvish has the best pitch mix out of the finest pitchers and is still pretty deceptive, uh, has a great cutter. I'd probably put him at the top of the list for pitchers. Devin Williams is coming in at the list in number two spot for pitchers as well as Trevor Bauer. Now you could probably flip flop these guys. I value that Devin Smith because of his stamina, because he has a great pitch mix and a really unique pitch mix in a way. But Trevor Bauer also has very good hits per nine, K per nine, and a bunch of active quirks as well. Now this isn't the first time I've talked about quirks. I've made five different videos dating back to a couple years ago. And originally when they released the player of the month, Cody Bellinger, back in June, he also had live series quirks added to his card. Now, if we take a look at this tweet, they included these live series active quirks on his card. Now, when we take a look at it, uh, or at least when I posted this tweet back in June, they took them off. So with that being said, I think that they originally you know, had plans to include these live series quirks on flashback players uh, I just didn't know that at the time, and I thought it was a mistake. So I kind of tweeted that out to MLB The Show, letting them know that that was in the game. Well, now we see Juan Soto and other finest cards, other Tops Now players, other uh, postseason guys, and a certain player of the months like Fernando Tatis, who have live series quirks. So with that being said, they do make a big difference in the game, and I've talked about this for several years now. Now, in a couple of those previous videos, I didn't do a very good job of explaining that some of these quirks that are on cards are simply just threshold quirks, or quirks that are given once a certain threshold is met. And with that being said, a few of those quirks, or a few of those uh, quirks that people initially thought were not active quirks, are actually active quirks. In this year's game, Unbreakable is an active quirk because it will help you regain energy in between games. Another quirk that's active is Pressure Cooker. And this is something that I've been talking about for at least three years now, even before they confirmed it in the fact that the clutch attribute will rival between the hitter and the pitcher, uh, depending on if there's runners in scoring position, depending on the vibration of the controller. But I want you to kind of uh, keep all these things in mind as we're playing throughout this game. So here we had a 1-1 count and a changeup to Juan Soto. The only active quirk that was available there was Night Player. And honestly, all of these finest cards are really good. I wanted to bring to you guys, you know, the top five finest cards, at least in my opinion. But there, if you notice, Mookie Betts absolutely crushed that home run in the last at-bat. He hits really well in terms of uh, first pitches and two strikes as well. Uh, you have to kind of know what you're dealing with in some of these quirks. Here we get a fastball. So we have the dead red quirk activated. And I missed it. I mean, I missed that one. Still had a high enough exit velocity to get by the first baseman. And we'll start to see a few examples of this taking place here in these games as I'm hopping into some ranked and uh, some other games as well when I've noticed this. But here's Mookie Betts up again. We have a 1-2 count, 
throw a hanging curve ball, you might as well just throw that one over the fence because that ball didn't even land. He does have 125 power, 122 contact. Both of those are going to be boosted up when he has two strikes. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that in this game, we are going up against Finest Jacob deGrom. And Finest Jacob deGrom also has active live series quirks on his Finest card. So as soon as we uh, get the lead, he has that stopper quirk, which will actually shrink the PCI when uh, the other team is winning. So that's what we're dealing with right now. Now that we got the lead back, our PCI has actually shrunk a little bit. Now that will also factor in with confidence, with energy. There are a lot of variables that are going into uh, some of these quirks and how it's affected with the PCI. But uh, with that being said, we do have a pretty close ball game here. Bottom of the fifth inning, Pablo Sanchez is up and obviously he doesn't have any active quirks or any quirks that really matter at all. Except for now, we have Pressure Cooker activated from Jimmy Fox here. He does excel when runners are in scoring position. If you notice, I mean, I'm just early. That PCI to me looks increased, but also uh, kind of as I'm swinging, it looks like it starts to increase a little bit. Now, not necessarily here, but these are types of things that I've talked about previously, and I've also included examples on certain cards that I think you know perform better or perform above their attributes. Now here we're going to give up a third home run in this game to Mookie Betts. He's absolutely unbelievable. If I had to choose another hitter, I would probably choose Mookie Betts because he plays the outfield and second base. He is probably in the discussion for uh, the top finest players in the game. But I want you to take a look at this slow motion swing from Juan Soto. If you notice, my PCI is almost going a little bit up towards the middle of the strike zone. And then it kind of just sits there precisely right where that pitch is coming in. Now, I don't think I moved it down perfectly to the spot there. I think I just got a decrease in penalty while moving the PCI and swinging at the same time because he has that breaking ball quirk. Now that is extremely difficult to test. I just kind of use uh, my eyes and in, in my visual experience in determining that. And if we take a look at the slow motion PCI placement, it kind of uh, confirms that a little bit. Now we would have to test it more often, but these are things that I've noticed by playing the game for several years. And honestly, this goes back to um, Bryce Harper in MLB The Show 18, I got that card early on in the year, and I really noticed the big time difference with fastballs, breaking balls, hitting with two strikes, and I wanted to also provide a few more examples in this video here. So anyway, we're in the bottom of the seventh, nine to six ball game. Juan Soto is up once again. Here we have a 2-0 count, and he goes with the fastball low. Now take a look at this swing. I'm late on it. Went down and got that one. Juan Soto does have a type of swing that excels at hitting low pitches as well. I noticed a lot of people say that um, Juan Soto just crushes pitches low in the zone and I've experienced the same type of thing. Now that's not necessarily an addition to his card or anything like that. It's just the way his swing travels through the zone in my opinion. Now we're going to be trying out Manny Machado here in this next game. We're also going to be using Denelson Lamette. I think Denelson Lamette is in the category for best finest pitchers. Um, another pitcher I would include probably a, a little bit ahead of him would be Jacob deGrom. Now Jacob deGrom for me does not pitch with a deceptive motion but he does have you know good quirks. He's got great per nines, great attributes and can be effective on the harder difficulties. Here we have Manny Machado up at the plate where the away team in a 1-2 count also playing at night. Now I want you to take a look at this swing. If I take this swing as the home team Playing in the daytime, that's probably a home run, probably a no doubt home run as well. And that's mainly because of the increased PCI size as well as that penalty or I guess, um, you know, taking that penalty out of the equation when you're moving that PCI to the baseball while swinging. Now, in that last inning, I got a leadoff double. I was not able to score the run. Uh, Oral Hershiser pitches extremely well with runners in scoring position and has that uh, really high clutch attribute. That will come into effect as well as, you know, continuing to get guys on base, continuing to, um, you know, get base hits, get these opportunities. Uh, we are going to get a pitch over the middle. There he missed location, threw a sinker right over the plate. 
Corey Seager hits a perfect, perfect home run with no live series quirks activated. Now, throughout this video, I've talked a lot about active quirks versus inactive quirks, um, but I didn't really talk about which ones are which. So any uh, quirks that give you a specific boost on a pitch or, um, you know, whether you're playing at night or in the daytime, whether you have a guy in, on third base, less than two outs, like situational hitter, those types of quirks are all active and will give you a boost. The ones that are inactive are quirks like bomber, just represent that you have 85 power against both sides. Um, some other quirks like hitting machine, 2020 vision, represent contact, represent uh, vision. Another one like check swings or um, excels at check swings, that is entirely up to discipline. But if you notice in that last at bat with Juan Soto, uh, we did have two strikes. You know, I noticed a big time difference in the PCI between that fouled off curveball and the home run pitch. Then we hit almost the exact same swing or the exact same hit in this game, and it's an out. We got a little bit more under the ball and didn't quite get the same result. Um, but here, Cody Bellinger's going deep. I can only imagine how good this card would be with those live series quirks. And I'm pretty uh, pretty happy that they took them out earlier on in the game because uh, Cody Bellinger is still really good in the game, but he would have been a lot better than some of uh, the legends that we had even. And I just didn't know if that was fair at the time for him to be the only flashback without live series quirks. But uh, I really want you guys to take a look at a couple of those other videos that I've posted. I also wanted to give a shout out to Seabrev as well for making a similar video and explaining everything really well. But that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you all for watching. I'm College Lefty and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.